Psalms chapter 17. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We welcome those that are joining by um, Facebook later by YouTube on tonight to the Lord's House of Prayer since you'll know the word um, Friday night Bible study. The Bible reminds us we're for laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisy, all envies and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And so we thank God for his goodness on tonight. Amen. Amen. And as I said, we're going to be studying out of uh, Mark 4. But uh, it's a few things that I want to read on opening in um, Psalms chapter 17. So let's go to Psalms chapter 17 right quick. Amen. It says here, the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear to my prayer that goeth not out of fiend or lying lips. Amen. Because if we are praying out of lying lips, then we can be assured God is not going to hear us. Amen. But um, he said, my prayer goeth not out of lying lips. Verse 2, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal or just. Thou have proved mine heart. Thou have visited me in the night. Thou have tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. That's what happens when you obey the word of God. It'll keep you from the path of the destroyer. From that broad way. Amen. Hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that saveth by thy right hand. Them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me. From my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps or surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Now I want you to listen. Which is thy sword? So the wicked... Uh, and I've taught us this before, is how is um, what God uses to judge. Amen. And you go back and you read the Bible when Israel messed up and disobeyed God, he would use other countries. He used Babylon to do what? To judge them. That's what it means. The wicked are thy sword. So for whatever reason, we don't know exactly what God is doing because what I want us to get used to um, doing is when things happen, not just look at it from man's standpoint. Not just look at it from, okay, Russia is invading Ukraine. But the Bible says that the wicked is God's soul. So what is God doing? Okay. And so we, we're not sure exactly why he's allowing that to happen. But he has to allow it because if he don't allow it, it can't happen. God is in complete control, and nothing happens until he allows it to happen. The Bible said he's already appointed a day when he's going to judge the, the world by Christ Jesus. And we know we're getting closer and closer to that day. But the wicked is the sword of the Lord. Now, I want to, and he's going to enlarge on that in, in the next passage. Next to what he said, okay? The arise, O Lord, verse 13 again, disappoint them, cast them down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. 
from men which are thy hand. You see that? Men are the hand of God. He uses men. Just like the devil used men, God used men to fulfill his will. And that lets us know he's yet in control. This is what he says. Which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babies. Their babies. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. So who's in control? God is in control. Let me see if I can find this. Um, I just saw it this morning. Um, in Proverbs, let me see if I can find it right quick. The Bible says, it's, I know it's in Proverbs, and I just saw it this morning. It might be Proverbs. Um, which one? Oh, I thought it was this. Proverbs. But it says, Proverbs 21. We're just going to read one verse. But just to remind us. Because even no matter what we're going through in this, in the earth, God wants his people to have peace. You know, because as I always say, when you are all worried and disturbed, you have a tendency to make what? Bad decisions, bad moves. But when you feel safe and you have peace, you can take your time and wait on the Lord to answer and tell you what to do. This is what he says here. Proverbs 21. The king's heart is where? So in this instance, we're talking about um, Putin. His heart is in God's hand. And listen what he says. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Amen. Because we say this could be the beginning of World War III, but maybe not. We don't know. We just have to wait and see. But we just need to um, remember our purpose for being here is, the Bible said, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And I talked earlier, um, late last year, about um, the fact that the harvest is ready, but the labors are few. He still is still giving us time to bring in the harvest. That has to be our focus. Because right now in the world, as things progress, things are going to get crazier and crazier. Amen. But we are not to lose our focus. Amen. And what's going to help us not lose our focus is understanding who's in control. God. God. He's yet in control. Amen. Not the devil. God is in control. Amen. Because if I, if I thought the devil had a chance of being in control, mm -hmm. I'd be real worried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Because he's come down having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Amen. But... Uh, He's on a leash, and somebody said it's a short one. <laughs> he can only do what God allows him. Amen. So let's give God some praise. Amen. Yeah. And he just wants us to rest and to pray for that situation over there. Amen. Because sometimes when things like this happen, people get saved. Amen. And sometimes that, that's what it takes. So we just pray that through this, people will get saved. Okay, now let's go to Mark chapter 4. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm going to be sharing some stuff. It's, uh, the Lord always leads me to people on YouTube that have information that um, God has shown me something, but he may not give me the depth of it, but then he'll lead me to somebody who's really searched it out and that just validate what, I, what I'm thinking, but it actually, he actually, they actually show the evidence, amen, because you know how I teach here, we don't listen to the worldly music, 
I teach that. You know, some people think that that's antiquated, outdated, and um, it's okay to listen to, you know, Michael Jackson and Prince and all them worldly folks. And then some people think, well, we should probably should listen to, you know, certain of the newer ones, but the old school is okay. No, the old school is not okay. <laughs> Amen. Remember this saying, what the fathers do in moderation, the children will do in excess. So the only thing we're seeing with all this rap and all this, and they just like, they just going crazy. Go back and really pay attention to what the fathers did. The children are just taking it to another level of wickedness. Amen. But when you think about some of them old songs you used to, them oldies, what we oldies but goodies you used to listen to, they did the same thing, but not as forwardly as this stuff that they got going on now. Amen. But the old Jays had some pretty raunchy songs now. Come on now. Think about it. And a lot of that blue magic and all them blue magic, that should have been an alarm bell right there. But when you think about it and understand, but this this gentleman, what he did, he shows um, that a lot of times we thought they were talking about their girlfriend, their boyfriend, and they were really singing to the devil. And he gives a good argument really can't. You know, they be talking about angels and stuff, you know. We just think he's talking about his little angel girlfriend, but when you listen to the lyrics, you understand he ain't talking about that. But um, I'll deal with that at another time. But saints, all it did for me was reminded me that the whole world lies in wickedness. Amen. Because sometime in this time that we're living in, people saying, you know, um, uh, it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. Not if the Bible said it's not. The Bible said we are to speak to ourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs because as I said before, a lot of times the only thing the enemy is doing is setting us up. It might not seem like it's affecting you right now, but he set you up to have it affect you later because it's, it's going into your spirit and you don't know what it's doing to your spirit. Amen. A lot of the movies that we just think are good movies and I keep telling us they are um, programming us to receive the Antichrist when he comes. That's why it's so important for us to do what the Bible said and come out from among them and be separate. Even when you don't fully understand just obey the Bible. Amen. Another uh, thing when I'm, I'm going to have, if the Lord bless, um, I'm thinking about having a, a night where we can watch some of this here so that you can see what I'm, I'm talking about. Sometimes I send it, but sometimes we don't watch it. But we need to understand this so that the devil don't get the upper hand on us. See, because uh, as I always say, when Jesus was asked, are there few to be saved? He said, strive to enter in at the straight gate. Why? Because many are going to seek to enter in and won't be able. See, but as we read in the 17th chapter of Psalms, it's by the word that we um, keep ourselves from the paths of the destroyer. What does the devil come to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. So anything he produces, what do you think he's producing? He's producing it to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. So who, who's producing all these worldly songs? That right there should be enough, but you know, we really have to think seriously because the enemy, he's working overtime. And it's for us not to be ignorant of his devices. Amen. And I was listening to some stuff today, and I was saying, um, you know, it's stuff we need to understand. 
Amen. So that we'll be um, keep ourselves. We because here, here's the problem. Because I don't care how well well you know you really shouldn't listen to certain songs. They sound good. <laughs> I'm not gonna step, step up here and tell you that you know. Uh, when I was in the world, I like to listen to, you know, the stylistics and the, them. It sounds good. And that's where he gets us. But you have to be able to discipline your flesh. No matter how good it sounds, you know it ain't good for you. And say, okay, I got to discipline myself. <laughs> huh? And so that's what God is teaching them. Because it, the closer it gets for him to come, it's going to get just worse and worse. And this one pastor, his name is Joe Shemmel. And he was one of the first ones that I really saw. He had a, a, a DVD, They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. Mm -hmm. And he dealt with the rock and roll side of it. And, you know, and um, he brought it out how these people just say they worship the devil. Do you listen to their songs? It's worshiping the devil. And he really brought it out. But I was still thinking, you know, well, that's, you know, black folk don't much listen to rock and roll. But it don't matter. The devil got something for everybody. <laughs> Amen. So these are things that we want to be aware of because what God is trying to do, he's trying to get our spirits to a place but no matter what we're going through, we will be able to make it through it. Because the enemy comes to try to weaken your spirit. And I know I've been there and I've done that. See, that's why I, I don't I don't pretend like I've always done everything right since I've been saved. No, I've done some stuff wrong. And that's why I, I, I teach like I teach because if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be standing here before you right now because I was watching things I shouldn't watch, listening to things. The devil deceived me. And, to, and, and the thing is, is um, it's only by the grace of God that we are not like everybody else. But in order for us to stay in that grace, we got to walk in obedience to his word. Amen. Okay, let's look at this, Mark 4. I want us to see some stuff here. Okay. And he began again to teach by the, sea, by the seaside, and there were gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables. And said unto them in his doctrine. Now I want us to understand. He didn't teach parables to make it plain to them. He actually taught parables to hide it from the masses. Because you have to remember. If they would have knew, known who Jesus was. The Bible said none of the princes of this world knew who he was. Because if they would have known who he was. They would not have crucified him. And if they would not have crucified him, we could not be saved. So he had to, for a time, hide his identity, who he was. Amen. But when he comes back, they're going to know. <laughs> Amen. But what he would do, he would teach in parables to the masses. But then he would break it down to his disciples. Okay, that's what the parables were all about. So, listen what he said in, in verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit, 
that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. Verse 9, And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now say that unto us tonight. Amen. Look at verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. See, it wasn't given to everybody to know the mystery. And, and I like what this word mystery, when I looked it up, I like what it says. It says, it's a, um, to shut the mouth, a secret or mystery through the idea of silence imposed by initiation into a religious rite. See, because you have to understand the privilege that you have in being saved, in being brought into the kingdom of God, in being brought into a place where God opens his word to you. Because everybody don't have that. Amen. And so it's like, you know, really the secret societies, that again, trying to copy God. <laughs> because you don't know their secrets unless you get invited in. And it's revealed to you. But Jesus taught the masses openly, but their minds were blinded. Their ears were shut. So that even though he was speaking this truth to them, they didn't have what? Ears to hear. You ought to thank God right now if you got ears to hear. Amen. Because that means God had to open your ears. I thank him all the time. When I look and I see the word people, I mean people that I may have grown up with people, but God opened my ears and let me hear and let me respond to the truth, but they didn't. So I have to just thank God because if it wasn't for his grace, and it wasn't nothing that I did. It's just he good like that, and, 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 and by his grace. So that's why we have to uh, um, understand that privilege. But as I always say, with privilege comes responsibility. So listen what it says. It says, it says a hidden thing, a secret, a mystery. Okay. And so he's teaching the kingdom and he's likening it unto just natural things so that we can get an understanding of what the kingdom of God is all about. Because the kingdom of God, it doesn't come with observation. You don't say low here, low there. The kingdom of God is where? Anybody know? It's within us. You receive the Holy Ghost, you receive the kingdom of God. It's in you. And it should be growing in you. It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And so we've been privileged to be brought into the kingdom of God. And then he says, in Christ we've been made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that we can be, so that by the Spirit of God, what he does, he breaks it down for you. <laughs> Just like Jesus did for them. See, because you sitting here, how many sometimes don't have a clue what I'm talking about? See, but then God opens it up to you. You had that experience. See, and that's how he, he you received the Holy Ghost so that, because it was the same thing. They didn't know what Jesus was talking about. His disciples didn't know. But he had to what? Open it up. That's why I pray for the saints. And I say, God, as Paul prayed, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in your knowledge. Because a lot of time, me, to get to where I am, that I have to read and pray and read and pray because often I didn't understand. But as I kept getting in the word, obeying the word, seeking God, he opened up my understanding. And when, once he opens it up, 
He just don't make sense. <laughs> so listen to what he said. Verse 11 again. He said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may not see and not, they, that seeing they may see and not perceive or not understand what they are seeing. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Because I listen to sometimes, um, I've heard people on YouTube or what, Facebook, and they're talking about God in one breath and then dropping F-bombs and all of this other stuff in another breath. Okay? But they, they feel like, they think they're on their way to heaven. How many times have we gone to funerals where... If we're just honest, we know that person that's in that box didn't make it. But folks say, well, he's in a better place now. She's in a better place now. Because their understanding has not been opened. Okay. Even though they're hearing the same thing you hear me. That's where I get my joy. I'll be just like, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Because it could have been me. Listen to what he's saying. Verse 12. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. That's at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? So he just spoke the parable and left it like that to the masses. But when he got his disciples, he said, now let me break it down to you. Because <laughs> remember, the disciples didn't understand it no better than the other folk. Until he what? Broke it down. Okay. Now he's going to break this down for us so we can understand. Look at verse 14. The sower soweth what? The word. The word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. Because he don't want that word to take root. You ever had that where you haven't heard a good word from God and it seemed like the devil came right away and was trying to take that word from you? Why? Because he don't want it to take root. If you sow a seed in the ground and then go and pull it back up, what's going to happen? You ain't going to get nothing. <laughs> See, that's why God wants us to learn how to meditate on the word of God day and night. Hide it in our heart and then protect it. Don't just let the enemy come. The Lord told me one time, he said, now you, you will spend 30 minutes in my word in an hour watching television, stuff you ain't got no business. What do you, just th what do you think just happened to that 30 minutes you put in? You got to understand what the devil is doing. You even got to watch. Sometimes when you get a word, you just need to go somewhere and just meditate. Get off by yourself and just let it, just marinate in it. Let it get down in your spirit. So when the enemy comes, he can't just what? Root it up. Because he's going to come, what did he say? Immediately. Now, I want you to watch because we're going to look at four different types of ground. But every type of ground, the devil is after the one thing. And that's what? The word. Listen to what he said. So verse 15, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay. That's the what? The wayside heart. And we got to ask ourselves, what kind of heart do I have? It's in verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they be, ex you ever heard a word? Just get excited about it. 
This is what he said. They received that word with gladness immediately. But look what happens. Verse 17. And have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. You know, you see them. They, they showing up on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday for a time. And then all of a sudden what happened? What happened to sister so-and-so? What happened to brother so-and-so? They endure for a time. Afterwards, watch this, when affliction or persecution arises for what? The, word. the word's sake. Immediately, they are offended or they stumble. Why? Because they don't have no root. That's why I teach us. Don't think it's strange because of the fiery trials and tribulations and the temptations that we have to go through. When you get saved, that don't mean the roads are going to get smooth. No, that ain't, that ain't hard in the way it is. It's going to get hard. He that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. When you get saved, then the enemy is going to come. He coming for you. Expect it. And don't think all of the coming for you is going to come from the outside. Some of it's going to be from the inside. Because I've heard too many people say that, um, well, when I got saved, you know, I was doing all that was on the outside. I didn't expect it on the inside. Everybody in here. I ain't, I ain't going to necessarily say they're not saved, but they may not be, be mature. But definitely everybody probably ain't saved. <laughs> Jesus had 12 disciples, but one of them was a devil. And he sold Christ out. Jesus said again, I love this one. He said, it was not my enemy that reproached me. For then I could have borne. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I could have what? Hid myself from him. But it was you my equal. Some of my worst hurt came from folk close that I thought was close to me. But you know what I made up my mind? I don't care where it come from. I'm going to stay with God. Because he ain't never did but nothing but good. And so you expect it. Because that's how the devil, that's another one of his tricks, how he get the word out of you. So let me read that again. Verse 17. Well, let's go back to 16. These are they, likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure but a time afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. And that's another important thing because sometimes you think, well, they, they coming at me. No, they coming at for the word. I was... Um, talking to someone before and, and, um, and I was trying to get them to see don't look at that person mm -hmm. and don't even look at yourself as being the object mm -hmm. look at the word they coming for the, it's the enemy in that person trying to get the word out of you because mm -hmm. he know the power of the word to keep us he said I'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not, what? Sin. So the devil knows if I can get the word out of him, I can get him to sin. So that's what he's saying. When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So don't let, and let me see, what's that scripture? One scripture, I believe it's in Psalms 119, but I forget the exact verse. But it says, Great peace have all they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And to offend means make them stumble. 
Because they what? They love the law of God. You got to love the word of God. With all your heart, your soul, your mind. You have to look at the word of God as your most precious possession. Let them steal my husband. Let them steal my wife, my children, my own life, my stuff. But I got to hold fast to this word. You can't have this word. <laughs> huh? Because ask Job. The devil came and what? Took everything he had and then touched his body. The only thing God said, don't touch his life. Don't take his life. But he gave him access to everything. But Job, he was protective of his what? Faith. He said, my integrity, I hold fast. I will not let it go. He wouldn't let it go because he took everything he had, but he, he took his wife captive. He didn't kill her. He just took her captive because he had another use for her. Because he thought, Joe really loved his wife now. If I, I, I could do him like I did Adam, get him through Eve. <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> but Job loved God more than he loved his wife. I always say, anything you love more than you love God is the very thing the devil is going to use to get you away from God. So don't love nothing more. You love the word of God. I had a young lady tell me one time she would get saved, but if she did, her husband would leave her. He left her anyway. But the next time I saw her, she said she had got saved. So sometimes you have to take some stuff out of your life in order to get your attention. Because he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but you can't, you can't, you can't. <laughs> I wouldn't advise you to trust your wife or your husband like that. Because they might. You hope they won't. If they're really good and in God, they won't. Amen. But you don't want to let anything mean more to you than this word. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next type of ground. So far we looked at the wayside heart and the stony heart. And let's move on to the thorns. Listen, watch this, verse 18. And these are they which were sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, that's the catch up. Entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. I preached the message once I said, Beware of thorns. And these are the thorns, the deceitfulness, the cares of this world. Because the devil can have you so focused on the the cares of this world that you don't take no time to what? Nurture that word in you. How many of you know if you plant a seed, even if you plant it in good ground but don't put no water on it, is it going to grow? It ain't going to grow. You know why? Because if you don't put no water on it, it won't die. And in order for a seed to grow, it has to first what? Die. Unless a corn of wheat fall into the earth and die, it abides alone. But if it will die. So you got to get some spirit on that word. Amen. So it will begin to what? Grow in you. So don't, don't let the care to this life, you, you, your bills, your um, in, in, um, whatever the cares of this life are whatever it is that got you stressed and worried, can't sleep. What are we supposed to do with the cares of this life? That's what the book say. Let's look at that. Go to Peter. First um, Peter.
believe it's the fifth chapter. Yes, First Peter chapter 5, and let's start at verse 1. Um, let's start at verse 1. It said, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Do what? That's what I'm doing now. That's my main function. Mm -hmm. Is to feed the flock. Feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint. But willingly. Not for filthy lucre. Mm -hmm. But of a ready mind. Mm -hmm. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. Because you don't belong to me. You belong to God. I'm an under shepherd. Okay. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. But being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise ye younger. Submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea. All of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. For God resisted the proud, but giving grace to the humble. You want grace? Humble yourself. And listen to what he said in verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Doing what? No, 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 no. Y'all misread that. It says, casting some of the... Are y'all sure y'all reading that right? So then why don't we cast all? Why do we just cast some? And some we want to deal with ourselves. He says, casting all of your care. No matter what it is, how little or how big, but in all your ways do what? Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We got to stop being selective. If it's a care for you, it's a care for God. He cares about the little thing. Because he knows how the devil can use little things to get you off track. Amen. To catch the little foxes that will destroy the vine. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how. But you know, and I'm just going and, and, and you don't think I'm talking about you, but I'm talking about me. <laughs> it just sounds like I'm talking about you. <laughs> you know, because some things we don't want to cast on him. Because we don't like how he going to handle it. Some things we don't want God to take from us. Sometimes we don't want, we know he going to say no. So we, we, we kind of like, I can handle this. <laughs> then when we mess it up, But we got to get to that place. <laughs> well, how many believe God had your best interest at all? Amen. Equally, how many believe your flesh don't? <laughs> your flesh is trying to destroy you. But God is trying to give you life. So he said, cast all your cares. Amen. Say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Okay. So he said, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. Mm -hmm. He said, be sober, be vigilant. 
because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resist how steadfast in the faith knowing or understanding that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world never let the devil tell you you the lone stranger you the only one going through what you going through nobody knows <laughs> the trouble i see Nobody knows my sorrow. Yes, they do. Why? Listen what the Bible said. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, what you're going through, somebody that been through it, somebody else is going through it right now. When you come out of it, somebody going to be going into it. The Bible said there has no temptation taken us but such as is coming to me, but God is faithful Amen. who would not allow us to be tempted above our ability but will with the temptation provide a way of escape and that's his word that you can so you can bear it but we have to be willing to take the way of escape that's why this flesh got to die okay let me read this and then we're going back over here but God verse 10 but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Listen. After that ye have what? Suffered a while. Suffered a while. I remember uh, I was the person going through some stuff. And I quoted them this scripture. And then they looked at me and they thought for me. And they said, well, how long is a while? <laughs> <laughs> you ever asked that? How long am I going to have to? Here's the key. Your while might be longer than my while. A while is just a while. But what you should take from that is that it's not going to be forever. It has an end. If it's a while, that means eventually this too will pass. And you just have to be, have that root in you. So when the storm is passed over, you still stand. You might be a little crooked, but you still. <laughs> We went through, uh, where was that, um, Florida, when we were going to a, um, a, a trip on Royal Caribbean with my mother. And when we got there, a hurricane had just been through. And as we riding on our way to, to the boat, you saw some trees that had been up in I mean, the roots were out of the, the hurricane and just blew them out the ground. But then you saw some other trees, them palm trees. You know, sometimes they'd be a little like this, but they still stand. You know why? Because their roots go deep. You can't have no shallow roots because some of these storms, if your roots ain't deep enough, it'll blow you away. So he said, after you have suffered, what? A while. So just say, okay, it's going to pass. You know, Job was, we don't know how long he was in what he was in, but we do know Joseph, his storm lasted for 13 years. But he came out. So never let the devil tell you, oh, this storm ain't going to never, it will. So you just hold on until the storm it may, you might have to see the storm is passing over. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop right there. So let's go back over here. We're dealing with the thorny ground. Verse 18 again. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world. So what are we going to do with the cares? We're going to cast them on the Lord. How do we do that? In prayer. Amen. We sing the song, take it to the Lord in prayer. Sometimes it might be too heavy for you to take. Get, get you somebody you can trust. And the Bible says that we have to um, bear one another's burdens sometimes. 
But make sure you can trust them now. Because you don't want them. Because some folk can't, they can't bear their burdens. How they going to bear yours? Some folk, as they say, can't hold water. You don't want folk that you tell them your problem and then you hear it in the streets. And you know that was the only one I told. So how did you find out? <laughs> Get somebody that if it's too heavy for Somebody you know you can call and say, I'm going through something. I need you to get on. You know, they teach us this in the post office. If you got a package or something that's too heavy, don't try to do it yourself. Don't you, you know. Because sometimes, you know, you think you can handle it. You test it, okay. And if you need some help, I'm, I, I'm right across from my daughter. And she, she'll say, Daddy, need some help over here. <laughs> huh? That's how we have to do it. And that's, that, that's the love we have to have one for another. And that we'll pray for, um, get on the other end of that thing and pray with you. Okay? So the kids of this life, this world, we're going to cast them on the Lord. And the deceitfulness of riches. Let me, let me give you a, a scripture that's going to help you that you can go to sometime. Go to Proverbs 23 right quick. Proverbs 23. This is the one I like to use. All the answers you need is in this book. Okay. Say the deceitfulness. Amen. Because most of us, in our flesh, when we're honest, if I say, who want to be rich in your flesh? Who want to be rich? Okay. We only have what, one, two, three. I said in your flesh. Okay, now we liven it up a little bit. Four, <laughs> five, six. six, okay. Okay, we about got a full house now. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because money answers all things. I mean, in my flesh. Yeah. Ain't nobody in the right mind want to be poor. In, just I'm talking from a fleshly standpoint. Now, that's why. You have to get in the word in order to temper that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause riches are deceitful. You think you if you just had more money, your problems would go away. That ain't even the truth. You just have different problems. <laughs> Rich folk have problems. Some of them have more problems you got. But they are different. But it's still issues. Man born of a woman's of a few days and Huh? Especially in, in these United States, rich folk got to figure out how to keep their money without the government taking it all. You got issues. But, but listen to this. This has been a blessing to me, and I want to help us because we don't want to set, because even Paul said, if riches, no, not Paul, but one place he said, if riches increase, don't set your heart on it. Listen what he says. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, we in Proverbs 23, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given the appetite. Be not um, desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meats. Now, listen to verse 4. Labor not to be what? Rich. Rich. Cease from your own Wisdom. That's why I said in the flesh. That's your own wisdom. But we thank God for the wisdom of God. Okay. This is what he said about riches. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. I, one, one, one night I was just on, I went on the internet and just looked up the lotto winners. You'd be surprised. Most lotto winners that win, win big, before you know it, they broke. 
because they don't have no wisdom how to handle it. Okay. I even seen some of them get killed for them. You know, the biggest problem, they get rich and folk know about it and all of a sudden, folk they ain't heard from in years. See. But they make themselves wings and they fly away. So let's go back over here. It says, the deceitfulness. How many know money can't buy happiness? Yeah. Money can't buy love. Yeah. Well, you got a lot of money, and, and you're looking for a husband, you're looking for a wife, um, it's, it's going to be hard, because you don't know whether they're marrying you for you or for your money. <laughs> so, it's deceitful. Riches. It's deceitful. But the word will give you the truth concerning it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And some of us might, God might give us riches, but if he does, he, you got you make sure you read Timothy chapter 6. Because he gives you instruction to warn them that are rich in this world that they be not what? High-minded because what happens often, people get a little money and they get a little high-minded. But he said, don't be high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Never put your trust in anything but God. Yeah. So that's what it's teaching us, but it's deceitful. Now, the last thing is, and the lust of other things, that's the catch-all. Whatever the other thing is in your life. Entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So you see what the devil is after tonight. As I always say, the devil wasn't after Job's children, though he took them. He wasn't after his riches, though he took it. He wasn't after his wife, though he took her captive. He wasn't after his body, though he touched it. What was he after? The word. He was after his faith, because our faith is based on the word of God. So we have to see the word like God sees it. It's precious. It's our most precious. Because Job held on to his faith. He got everything backed up. But more than that, he had a deeper experience with God. Because he said, before I went through all that I went through, and understand when you go through, you ought to come, come out knowing God a little bit better. That should be the goal. But he said, before I went through what I went through, I had heard of you but the hearing of the ear. But he said, since I've been through what I've been through, now my eye has seen you. And when he saw God, he was able to see himself differently. It humbled him. And it allowed God to do what? Exalt him. Okay. Now, the last ground, this is what we all, this is where we want to be. Okay. Verse 20. And these are they which are sown on what? Good ground. Good ground. Such as hear the word and what? Receive it. Receive it. And bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. And one place it says, bring forth fruit with tribulation or with trouble. Amen. Because if you're going to be fruitful, you're going, to, you're, going to, you're going through something. And so you just have to get your mind fixed. That you're going to stay with God no matter what you got to go through. Because when you come out, God, the Bible said, after you've suffered a while, he's going to make you what? Perfect. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. And he's going to settle you. So that you'll be able to weather the storm. Just like Job. See, that wasn't the first thing Job had been through. Job, he was an older man, I guess, at that time. I don't, I don't know how old he was. But he had 
been through a lot of stuff to get his faith to the level that it was. But God knew what he could bear. Amen. And so your faith is at a level now, but you don't want it to stay at that level. Amen. You want it to what? Grow. But understand, as your faith grows, it's just like when you in school. In kindergarten, you get what? Kindergarten tests. But, or do they even, well, they do now, probably. But when I was growing up, you didn't even get tested in kindergarten much. You just had fun and just learned simple stuff. <laughs> but your tests are according to your grade. And understand, God will never give you, you in the first grade, he ain't going to give you a 10th grade test. Mm -hmm. You know, because the devil will have you think, I can't take this. Yes, you can. Because if you couldn't, God wouldn't have put it on you. He wouldn't allow the enemy to test. The enemy is the one, he's the test. But he won't allow him to test you above your ability. Remind yourself that when the enemy trying to whisper in your ear, you can't take it. You can take it. Say that with me. I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> what I'm going through right now, I can take it. Because God is with me. He's going, and it's just going to build me up. So this is that final ground. Okay. When it fell in good ground, they were what? Received it. And you know, you see what is absent to you is the devil. Don't think the devil ain't trapped, but it was in good ground. And when you received it, the Bible said unto as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. So when you receive God's word, you meditate on God's word. And, and I know because I'm in this world, sometimes it's hard to stay focused. But you got to fight for focus. Amen. Because sometimes you, you and, and, and this happens so you wake up and you all get up and you and prayed and got in the word and I mean you ready to just knock the devil out. And then he'll do something to get your mind off. And then the next thing you know you like. <laughs> You got to be focused because <laughs> it's so much. Amen. But God's going to help us. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for the Lord tonight. Amen. We don't want to be ignorant of his devices. And we know God has given us an understanding of his word. And so we thank God for his word and we thank God for you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have a wonderful